Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, okay, you guys, uh, without further ado, we are going to uh, read the very first episode of season one, the pilot episode. And just to reintroduce the cast really quickly in case you're just joining us, this is of course, Christina Applegate as Jen. Woo! And Linda Cardellini as Judy. Woo! Woo! And James Marsden as somebody. Who's that? <laughs> and Susie Nakamura as Karen. Woo! 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 And the Luke Rossler as Henry. Luke. Oh. And oh, Luke. Uh, Sam McCarthy as Sammy. Sorry, just kidding. What's your <laughs> character's name again? Charlie. There it is. Charlie <laughs> Honey. Uh, brother. Oh, and now I have another cat. And, uh, and Kong Sim as Pastor Wayne. Ooh. And uh, your best friend of mine, Kelly Hutchinson. Uh, all right. Woo! Playing multiple parts today to help us out. All right, you guys, let's get started. This is season one, episode one, Dead to Me. <clears throat> are, you, are you doing the stage directions? I'm going to do a little bit of stage directions, but like not like all of them. Okay. Yeah. Just let us know. Okay. <laughs> we just guess when to talk. <laughs> <We'll just guess. laughs> so uh, here we go. Fade in interior Jen's house. Jen, uh, poised and put together, stands at her front door. Karen, an uptight Orange County mom, hands her a casserole. So you just heat it up at 300 and leave it in for 35 minutes. Thanks, Karen. You, you just really don't have to keep it's doing this. It's my take on the I'm, Mexican lasagna. So. Great. <clears throat> it's, it's nothing. We just, we just don't want you to think you're alone. Jeff and I are here for you if you, you ever want to talk. Thanks. Just can't imagine what you're going through. Well, it's like if Jeff got hit by a car and died suddenly and violently, like that. Right. <clears throat> well, um, you get that dish back to me whenever you... Yep. And shuts the door in her face. Title card's dead to me. Exterior Laguna Beach day, Judy Garland's Get Happy plays as the camera surfs through the streets of Laguna. It's a beautiful day and we focus in on a Mercedes SUV as it turns into a parking lot. Jen pulls her SUV into a spot. She checks her eye makeup in the mirror. It's smudged from crying. She wipes the mascara off, takes a deep breath, grabs her purse and exits the car. She walks down a pathway to a charming bluffside gazebo. Attached uh, to the gazebo is the sign that reads, Friends of Heaven. Uh, Jen, uncomfortable, heads to an underwhelming snack table she pours herself coffee, takes a sip, spits it right back out. Judy Hale approaches, smiling. Skip the coffee, it's horrible. I made it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm Judy. Hi, Jen. Come to this group often? Uh, no, this is my first time here. Me too. Hmm. You know, I'm sorry. I hope this isn't weird. Do you do real estate? I feel like I've seen your face on like a like a bus bench or something. You and a cute gay guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's me. And Christopher, who does not think he looks gay in that picture. But. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean that in a bad way. I think gay is beautiful. Which bench did you see? I think it's the one where you're like. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm, 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 I mean, like, I, I guess I meant, where do you live? Oh my gosh, sorry. Okay. Newport Beach. Oh, you live in Newport. Mm, yeah, I don't think I look like I belong there either. Yeah, well, I don't think. Uh, it's not a bad thing to not belong there, right? Jen grabs a business card from her purse, hands it to Judy. Um. You ever need a real estate agent? Oh, wow, I might. Thank you. Sorry, I hope this isn't weird, but can, can I give you a hug? No. Okay. 
Little leader, Jen and Judy sit in a circle of chairs. With Should have shot it. <laughs> <laughs> Check the gate. It's so weird to go all the way back there. Mm -hmm. Should have shot it. <laughs> uh, okay. It's, uh, it's, it's sort of warm in my heart out. Um, Is it warm in your heart? Yeah. I'm really warm. <laughs> You're extremely warm. Well, I have to turn okay. off my PCs over from two. Um, okay, we're uh, in the gazebo now. Jen and Judy sit in a circle of chairs with Pastor Wayne, Kyle, Yolanda, Wendy, and Linda. Looks like we have some new people today. Hi, I'm Judy. Hey, Judy. Hey, Judy. Hey, Judy. <laughs> What's up, Judy? Um, no, it's okay. It's okay. Where's Kyle? All right, all right. Well, welcome to Friends of Heaven. I'm Pastor Wayne. As some of you know, I like to start out our grief circle by talking about a loss I lived through that got me into this work. My aunt fell down a flight of stairs and cracked her head open and bled out as her five-year-old son watched. And I was the one who asked her to get me a soda from the basement. So I live with that. And uh, that's a little something about me. Oh my God. I appreciate that. Is there a loss you've had that you'd like to share with us today? I, uh, yeah, um, I lost my fiance eight weeks ago. It was really sudden. One minute we were eating dinner and then the next, he you, was just you, gone. You flash back to the hospital night. Judy in a pretty summer dress is doubled over crying next to a nurse. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Back on Judy in the grief circle. Everyone's looking at her. Yeah. Heart attack? Yeah. He was 44. Thanks. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So, last week we started talking about the F word <laughs> forgiveness. Oh. Forgiveness can be very difficult and it can take time, even a lifetime. But no matter what the circumstances, everyone is deserving of forgiveness. You really think that? Jesus thought that. Amen. I'm, I'm excuse me. I'm, um, how do you forgive someone who hits your husband with their car, then drives away, leaving him to bleed to death on the side of the road? How do you forgive that? The circle goes quiet as everyone stares at Jen. No, that's it. I just don't really want to get into it. So someone else can go. At your own pace. You know, it's it's okay to feel whatever you're feeling. Sad, angry, defensive. I'm not defensive. Hurt. Okay. I'm tired. I'm tired too. Can you tell us more about that? Um, yeah, um, I haven't been sleeping, um, never been a very good sleeper, but since Ted died, not at all, I mean, not naturally anyway, but I, I I'm not going to take pills, you know, I'm not like a pills person, you know, I have two kids, I'm not going to. Two boys need me, and I'm I'm not going to become one of those like Xanax, Ambien, zombie moms, you know. Linda, dead faced, gives Jen a knowing look. Later, outside the gazebo, the group disperses as not Jen heads Linda. out. Judy stops her. <clears throat> hey. Hi. Judy hands Jen a small piece of paper. I'm up all night. Feel free to call me, and we can not sleep together. Later in Den's dining room, she eats uh, uh, the casserole Karen gave her with her sons, Charlie and Henry. It's supposed to be Mexican lasagna. Why are there raisins in this? I honestly don't know. I like it. I'm sick of other people's food. <laughs> Me too. I miss dad's cooking. Me too. It's just not fair. Why did our dad have to die? Why didn't Tyler's dad die Rick? That guy's a twat waffle. I like Rick. 
Later in Henry's bedroom, Jen tucks him in. She turns off a lamp and switches on his nightlight. You have to wait till I'm asleep. All the I way asleep. Mm -hmm. I know, boo. Mommy, I don't want to go to school tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I care, Mom. I want to go to work with you. Oh, sweetie, I know. We just can't. We can't do that anymore, okay? I mean, it's been three months. I think it's just time for us to go back to normal. But I want to be with you. I know. I know, baby. You know, what happened to your dad was an accident. As far as we know. Char Charlie, please. What happened to your dad was a freak accident. And nothing like that is going to happen to me, okay? I promise you. I know. It's not that. I'm not worried something's going to happen to you. What, then what are you worried about? I just don't want you to be alone. A little later, Jen's in her bathroom, ugly sobbing on the toilet, <laughs> muffling her cries with the pillow. She finishes peeing, grabs some toilet paper, and still cries into her pillow. A little later, we see Jen go through her nightly rituals. She pumps full speed on her Peloton bike, drenched in sweat. She finishes a work email on her laptop, typing on Zillow, perfect time to list your house, it's a seller's market. She <laughs> stares at the ceiling fan spinning. Her bedside clock reads 12.06. Then, at a loss, she takes out Judy's number. Now we're going to intercut with uh, Judy's bedroom. Judy, wide awake, lays in the dark, watching like a self-helpy TV show. Her phone rings. She answers. <clears throat> Hello? Oh, geez. Really, props? I got a script. I mean, what do you got? A banana? I don't have banana phones. <laughs> <laughs> I got a script, and I want to do that. Okay, go ahead. You don't have to. Continue A. Hello? <laughs> Uh, Judy? Judy? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, Jen from the grief thing, uh, groupie thing. Hi. Hi. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't even know why I'm calling you. No, come on, I told you you could. Is it, uh, is it too late? No. Are you in bed? Yeah. What are you wearing? What? What are you wearing? A um, pair of my husband's sweatpants and a t-shirt he got for running a 5K for psoriasis. Slower. Oh my God, you're a weird person, Judy. Thank you. Did your husband really like running or did he just really hate psoriasis? Sorry. No, you don't have to if you don't want to. No, no. He um he liked running. Came to it later in life. He was 40. What made him start? He uh he was getting doughy. Oh yeah, men get that middle aged puff. No, yeah, he had a full on beer belly. Getting kind of a beer neck. Beer neck? Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, he started running. Um, I was proud of him. He was the, in the best shape of his life when he, um, when the car hit him. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Is that a dog? Yeah. yeah. I don't know who it is. Um, it's Kong's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's not mine. Okay. And back in scene. Right, right. Hmm. right, right. Are you? It's jelly beans, but it's really end mm. oh, You have prop. You have food props. Props. Okay. She's a pro. Are you? I just have are food. You eat, to be honest, in a phone. Okay. Are you eating? Anywhere without those two things. Yeah, I am. I'm back in the show, oh, Linda. I'm also in the show. I'm always <laughs> too. Are you eating some? Mm-hmm. It's an Enterman's chocolate chip cookie. You know the only one? Yes, I do. In Jen's kitchen, a little later, Jen eats an Enterman's chocolate chip cookie, the, the little one, at her kitchen island, still on the phone with Judy. The microwave clock reads 1247. Uh, Ted was always a really good musician, even then. 
He was the only guy I knew who liked Annie DeFranco. Oh, anyway, I haven't really, I haven't talked about him that much since he died. Stop, I don't mean to pry. No, no, it's, it's actually, um, it's nice. A little later, we're in Jen's bedroom again, and she lays sideways across her bed, still on the phone. Her bedside clock now reads 2.38. Did you get it? Judy looks at a photo on her phone. Is that him? No, that's my other husband. Oh, you have another one? Then you're fine. Oh, well, if something happens to him, then. <laughs> <sighs> I heard that. I heard that. You should ride that wave and go to sleep. Oh, no, 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 no. I want a picture of Steve. I'm going to have to look. Jen's phone dings. Judy sent her 10 pictures. Found some. Oh, jeez. Okay, hold on. Jen scrolls through the pictures. Steve is a cute, clean-cut, well-dressed guy. Jen stops on a photo of him standing in front of a beautiful, expensive-looking Newport Beach house. Is that your house? Yeah. Harbor Ridge? Yeah. Oh, it's a lovely home. He was very handsome. Thanks. Yeah, I always thought he had kind of like JFK Jr. vibe. JFK Jr. was so hot. So hot. And then just so sad. So sad. So sad. You're tired. I think I am. You're not? No. But I'll let you go. No, I... Would you, would you mind, um... Would you just mind waiting until I fell asleep? Oh, okay. No, I mean, like, like, all the way asleep. Sure, of course. Thank you. Do you want me to keep talking or? No, because then I can't fall asleep. Judy stays on the phone as Jen drifts off to sleep. She's in a montage as Don't Worry Baby uh, by the Beach Boys play. We see Jen waking up and uh, with her phone next to her on the pillow in her bed. Then outside uh, a Laguna Beach neighborhood, Jen drives si sizing up different houses. She approaches an older man where, uh, watering his giant lawn. She hands him her card. Now we're at Beach Haven Assisted Living, where Judy hangs a flyer for painting basics with Judy on the activities bulletin board. Judy brings over some water and medicine to Abe, her favorite resident. Exterior Laguna Beach Street, Jen drives, checking out every parked car on the street. Then we see her walk up to a car with a dented front bumper. She writes down the license plate number. The next day, Judy's sitting on a bench alone, eating a salad. A young mother, pushing an adorable baby in a stroller, sits beside her. Judy makes a silly face at the baby, and it smiles. She reaches out and touches the baby's foot. The young mother looks at Judy, weirded out, and leaves. Now we're back at the gazebo, and uh, Judy enters the grief group with two Starbucks coffees and hands one, to, hands one to Jen. Jen smiles. They take their seats next to each other in the circle as Pastor Wayne starts the group. End of montage. Now we're uh, another night, Jen's bedroom and Judy's bedroom, they're on the phone. Jen lies in her bed sipping a glass of wine. Judy lights uh, incense on a small table decorated with crystals and feathers and that kind of thing. Her TV flickers in the background. I mean, if I knew it was the end, I would totally start smoking immediately. Oh my God, yes. Right? Immediately. Smoking is the greatest thing that slowly kills you. Like the greatest. Yeah. Ooh, Fast the Life is on. What channel? 391. Jen grabs her remote, finds the channel. Oh, God. I used to love this show. Loved it. Later, another night, Judy takes a sip of wine, now next to Jen on the couch, watching Facts of Life on an outdoor TV. The backyard is bougie, the kind with a pool, hot tub, and a guest house. How did I not know that this was on every night? More importantly, why are the other girls like 15 and Tootie is like nine? <laughs> I don't know. Has anyone ever told you you're kind of a flare? What? 
fuck you. Fuck you. I'm a Joe. How are you a Joe? I'm sitting in your outdoor living room watching TV next to your hot tub. It feels a little blurry. Oh my God, I'm a fucking Joe. Okay. What, why? What, who are you? I'm a tootie. The player. How are, how are you a Joe? Because I'm tough. I'm from Brooklyn. You're from Brooklyn? How did I not know that? You don't sound like you're from Brooklyn. I used to have an accent. What'd you sound like? Like someone from Brooklyn? Like what? Like this. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. I can hate <laughs> You are a joke. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I'm a piece of work. According to my business partner, Christopher, my anger is an issue. Personally, I think your anger is understandable. Yeah, well, you haven't been on the receiving end of it. I mean, there are healthier ways to channel it, like meditation or... No, I meditate. Yoga. I meditate in my own way. We smash cut to Judy and Jen sitting in the driveway in oh, Jen's boy. car blasting death music. Jen sings there I go. There you go. Jen sings okay. along. <laughs> you fucking prick! Drop dead! You make me sick! Like you fucking prick! Drop dead! You make me sick! Get out of my hood! <laughs> Judy, Judy tries and struggles to get into the music. Now we're in their car speeding down the coast highway, still listening to Countdown's paralyzed. Jen bangs her head. Judy is stunned, kind of scared, kind of delighted. They look at each other and smile, but then Jen sees something. They pull over, and now Judy watches Jen on the side of the road inspecting a car with a dent in the front bumper. Do you do this a lot? Uh, no, just every time I see a person-sized dent in the front of a bumper of a car. Okay. I know. Cops keep saying hit and runs are almost impossible to solve, so. But you feel like maybe you can find the person this way? But it makes you feel better? Not really. I have an idea. Cut to Jen and Judy sitting on the sand on the beach. Judy pulls out a joint and lights it. What do you, what do, you do? What do you do? It's legal. Relax. No, oh, thanks. I'm just not really a drug person. It's not drugs. It's a plant. It'll help you sleep. Judy hands her the joint. Jen reluctantly takes a puff. You totally found an old by. straw. I found an old straw. Oh, I thought you had well, found an old joint was what you were going to say. <laughs> no, I don't do that. There are children here. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I mean, that's acting. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you immediately feel mm. nice. <laughs> yeah. That's why I like, yeah. And I laugh. Can I, um, can I say something weird? Can I say something weird to Please. you? Please. Yeah, you always do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I don't know, just no. coming into my life like this, like weird little pot fairy. And also just for not saying and doing the same stupid shit that everybody says and does. It makes you feel more fucking alone than you already are. And for not being repulsed by my version of grief. Thank you for the same. You know, it must be hard for you to be alone in that big house without Steve. It is. It's really hard. I miss him. I know. I know you know. Lights out. Was that in the ridge? On the on the joint. The lights oh, out. Oh, that wasn't. Did we shoot that? Cut. Cut. Anyway. Cut. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Oh, I was the lights. surprised that lights out too. I think you yeah, said it, it went out the, or something. It's a, it's like the lights out or something like that. Or oh, like, but it wasn't like in the, like a, it wasn't in the sh in the program. Oh, it doesn't matter. 
You say something like that in that. You say something similar, I think. Yeah, you say something like that. I think that. I said I peed my. It wasn't okay. in the program. You're getting there. Don't worry. <laughs> it was, not wait, not I'm in the program I was in. It wasn't in the program. <laughs> serious moment. It wasn't in the nice. program. We're on the beach. Okay, go. We're live. Well, sorry. Lights out. Lights out. Lights out. You're right. Lights out. Well, you probably shouldn't have any more anyway. <laughs> I don't think so because I have my tongue. <laughs> I'm so I'm so fucking high. Why did you just give that? What the? I fucking just. I think I peed. Is that like what I just did? Oh no, I didn't. I didn't. I'm feeling it. It's not wet. It's good. <laughs> but time, it has a sensation of urination. The next I'm having more. By the way, we're that not also wasn't in the program. No, but no. what's the scene? You guys kept going, and you did. You improvised a bunch of. Um, very funny. Weird things. shits. Yeah, a bunch of weird shit that I wish we could have uh, had time to put in the pilot. Uh, Hold on. If you're just joining us, we're raising money for worldcentralkitchen.org forward slash said to right. an incredible organization that provides food and opportunities for restaurants to stay open. All right. Over 6 million people. It's, okay, here we go. It's Guys. Also, it's also a penmanship contest. Susie's got, um, got it win. Okay. Here we it go. It looks like dead tome. I just photoshopped. Yeah. All right. Okay, here we go. It's we're not an act part. break, guys. This is now we're coming on to the, like, a very pinnacle scene. Get serious. Get it <laughs> together. <laughs> I'm going to take it in. Let's All right. Go. Here we go. We're in, Jen's, we're in Jen's car, and uh, her, her phone, uh, she's making a call through her Bluetooth, and we intercut. You ready, Marsden? with Judy in her bedroom. Oh. Judy picks up. Good evening. Will I come over? Uh, no, cause I'm coming to you. Did you say what? Yeah, we're having a little bit of a hard time hearing you, Linda. What? Put your phone away from your earbuds. Get your oh, phone away right. from your earbuds. Start over. Take two. I'm getting a banana. All right, ready? Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. Over? Oh my God. No, because I'm coming to you. What? Come on. You've been coming to me this whole time. You don't even know where I live. Oh, I do. I'm pulling up right now. Jen looks at her phone. She zooms in on the photo of Steve standing in front of their house. The house number is right behind him. She hangs up as she parks in front of that same house. Exterior, Steve's house. Jen gets out of her car, a box of little Entenmann's chocolate chip cookies in her hand. She knocks on the door, no answer. Judy! Jen knocks Judy, 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 Judy. The door opens. A man stands there in his room. Jen immediately recognizes him. Can I help you? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I've always wanted to do it that way. You never let me. <laughs> Asshole. Can I help you? I'm Steve. Sorry. Okay. Uh, can I help you? Can we get Dermot Mulroney in here to change this whole thing up? I liked it. Hey, just yep. okay. options. Giving you options. I'm giving you options. Okay. okay. Right. Can I, uh, yeah. Can I help you? You're Steve. Yeah. You're alive. Uh, yeah. Sorry, it's 11.30 at night. What's what's happening? Do I know you? Uh, no, I've, I've heard a lot of... Jen's phone rings. It's Judy calling. Is Judy here? No, Judy doesn't live here anymore. She doesn't? No, we broke up two months ago. Wow, this is... Uh... Cut to Judy's bedroom. Judy paces and frantically calls Jen again but her voicemail picks up. Hey, Jen, um, I can explain. Please call me back. I'm so sorry, please call me back. Please let me explain. Back outside Steve's house, Jen stands on the porch stunned. Okay, wait, wait how, do you, how do you know Judy? I, I um, just thought she was a friend. <clears throat> a friend, oh, okay, well, if you see her, can you tell her not to see, you can tell her to stop coming around here while I'm at work or I'm gonna change the locks, okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry to bother you. It's all right. It's all right. I, I got to go. I'm running a bath. Do you want company? Let me do that again. Let me do, the, let me do that again. Sorry. Do you uh, want company? 
I'm gonna do that again. Um, Can you do it as okay. a legal Englishman? Yeah, yeah, yes. It's all right, but I've got to go. I'm running a bar. Uh, that's all right. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. I'm running a bath. Okay. Steve starts to shut um, the door. Jen stops him, and she takes something. You know out. what? Maybe it's better that she doesn't know where you live. The seller's market. Again, I'm. I'm so sorry. Do you really want company in that bath? I'm totally done. No, Man. sorry, Liz. Sorry, you're. That was a, that scene ended up on the on the cutting room floor. Yeah, yeah. it was a different direction for uh, Jen and Steve, but um, <laughs> okay. No, how the scene actually ends, it's a seller's market. Again, I'm so sorry. Steve looks at her business card and back at her, not knowing what to make of any of it. Uh, back, oh boy. back at the gazebo. <laughs> here we go. Buckle up, Applegate. Um, it's the next day. Jen charges in. <laughs> Just as the group takes their seats, uh, she heads right for Judy. To prepare. Okay, sorry. What the fuck, huh? Jen, please. Please wait. I can't hear. What's happening? Wait, I can explain. Oh, Rit, then do. Oh, uh, what? What is going on? Why don't you tell them what's going on? Judy, huh? I guess Kate and Allie are having trouble. It's um, it's very complicated. No, it's not complicated, okay? Her fiance isn't dead, okay? Unless that was his ghost who answered the door last night because that would be fucking complicated. Because it's not fucking complicated because he's not fucking dead. Like, what, what, what do you get off pretending you're going through the same fucking thing that the rest of us are going through? No, of course not. I, okay, well, this is, what is this? What is this, some kind of fucking game that you're playing with me, with everybody else, making up a whole fucking story? You don't belong here because he's not fucking dead, Judy. He broke up with you. Probably because you're a fucking lunatic who lies about him fucking being dead. Okay, again, please settle down. Yeah, let her talk. I don't want to let her talk, Kyle! <laughs> now this is getting real. Judy, you go ahead, honey. I don't know what to say. That's so powerful. Jen, I'm so sorry. You have no idea. I'm so sorry to all of you. I really, I am, I am. I don't know why I wasn't trying to hurt you or pull anything or hurt anyone. I never meant, I never meant to hurt anyone. I swear to God. I just, it's true, Steve is alive. Yep, not dead, alive. He didn't die two months ago, but I did lose him because he broke up with me. Oh my God, it's not the fucking same. I know, I know. Just, he broke up with me because we, we really wanted to have kids and we tried and we tried for years, but I couldn't, I just, I kept having miscarriages. We flash back to hospital night. We matched to the previous flashback, Judy in a pretty summer dress doubled over, crying next to a nurse. I'm so sorry. Let's get you to your room. As Judy stands up, we see blood on the front of her dress. The nurse puts an arm around her and escorts her down the hall. Back to the gazebo, present day. Everyone focused on Judy, but Jen can barely look at her. That was my fifth one. I really thought that I was going to have a baby and a family, you know? And then to find out there's just something that's broken inside of me. I think that going through all of that just messed me up a little bit. I swear I'm not a bad person. I'm not. It doesn't matter. I just, I'm, I should have never come here. Jen, I am so sorry that I hurt you. It's like the last thing I wanted to do. I really cherish our friendship. I really, really do. I'm so, shit, I'm so sorry. Judy rushes away, crying. Jesus Christ. Well, that is a sad story. Yeah, yeah, if you believe it. What's wrong with you? Wait, me? What about her? Yeah, find a different group, Judy. Yeah, fuck yeah, Linda, thank you. Okay, Jen, Judy's in pain, and I know that you are too, but that doesn't make it okay for you to attack someone like that. Don't you guys hang out all the time? Did you? How did you not know any of that? I don't know. I mean, either way, Judy has every right to sit in this circle. Yeah, I mean, in a, in a way, her life is sadder than a lot of ours. 
She lied. Okay, Jen, JC on a stick, okay? Everyone's grief manifests in different ways. Judy lied. You flew into this terrifying rage. Look, we're, we're all doing the best, but you have got to start reconciling that anger inside of you. Pastor Wayne. Okay, don't let this cause you more grief than it already has. You already have. Capiche? Back in Jen's car, a little later, she turns on her engine as the heavy death metal starts to blare. She punches it off. <laughs> now we cut to Judy's room. Night. Judy, also devastated, smokes a cigarette out of the window. Now we're in Henry's bedroom. Night. Jen lays awake next to a sleeping Henry, his little hand in hers. He snuggles into her. In Judy's bedroom, later, a distraught Judy paces in her room. She checks her phone to see if maybe it's ringing. It's not, but it reads 1206. We match cut that to Jen's bedroom. Jen's phone reads 1206. She puts it down and turns her TV on. We hear a scene from the facts of life. Another day at Beach Haven Assisted Living, an orderly points Jen to Judy, who organizes the shelf of art supplies. Jen walks over to her. Sorry. Hi. Hi. Just to just tell me. I know. I know, but I didn't. I should have, but I didn't. I don't know why. Because you have issues. Oh, you have no idea. I have them too. You're allowed. So are you, Judy. I mean, yeah, it's weird. It's weird you lied about Steve. It's fucked up. But maybe it was easier to lie about that than it is just to tell the truth about other stuff. Maybe. I'm really sorry that I said you didn't belong. You've lost a lot too. We were just miscarriages. It wasn't like I had an actual. Oh, no, come on. It, it's, an, it's an actual thing. I mean, not if a, re a Republican is asking me, but you heard a heartbeat and you fell in love with that heartbeat. Come on, I have tissues and whiskeys in my room. Wait, you live here? In Judy's bedroom at the assisted living facility, moments later, Jen looks around this small, depressing little bedroom. Judy pours them both some whiskey. Wow, so this is where you were every time we would talk on the phone, huh? Yeah, they've been letting me stay here until I find a place. Rooms open up all the time. I'll bet. Oh, yeah, you got used to it. Okay. I didn't think you'd ever talk to me again. You were so angry. I told you you wouldn't like it. I did not. It was scary. Look, um, my guest house is open. Um, it used to be Ted's music studio, but he's not using it. Um, you're welcome to. You're welcome to what? To stay with us. Oh, that's very generous, but you don't have to take pity on me. Just because I'm a 41 year old barren woman sleeping in an assisted living facility? Yeah. Yes, I do. Seriously, just come. It, it would, it would be, it would be nice having you there. Thank you. Can I give you a hug? No. Come here. Jen and Judy hug. They stay there a while. Exterior Steve's house. Another day. 
Jen and Christopher hammer a for sale sign into the lawn of a house. The front door opens. Steve walks out as we widen to reveal it's his house. Interior storage unit, night. Judy opens the garage door to her storage unit. She flips on the lights and we see the side of a vintage 66 Mustang. Oh. <laughs> wow. She grabs a suitcase from a shelf in the back of the garage, pulls some clothes, packs them into a suitcase, opens the trunk of the car, and grabs some shoes and sweaters. She shuts the trunk and walks to the front of the car. She looks at it and takes a breath. As she stands there, we slowly pan to see oh. that she's looking at a big person-sized dent in her front bumper. I never saw the finale. Is that what happened? <laughs> she turns off the light, pulls the door down, and as Judy Garland's Get Happy begins to play, we cut to black. Hallelujah, get happy, takes <laughs> all your cares away. Thank and the God. zoomy and the zoomy goes to oh. <laughs> too early for zoomies. Probably not. Oh God, that's going to be the wave idea. of the future. That's the wave of the future. You guys, that was uh, that was so awesome. I just wish I could hug you all. That, I love you so much. You're, that was wonderful. Okay. I love you. Oh, guys, we're doing this to raise money for WCK.org. WCK. World. Jose, Jose, Jose. It's it. It's a great organization. Feeds millions of people. Chefs for um, America. That was really fun. And I, we, I forgot to mention, I think, uh, before uh, that we can answer some questions. We can do a little Q&A with the audience if, um, if folks have can questions. I to, can I go to the bathroom and then I'll come back for that? You have to answer gonna, questions from the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, take us with you. Yeah, just, yeah, you always have a laptop, right? Yeah. No, no, she's on an old, she's got an old CRT monitor in there. No, got I'll be old, right back. Uh, I seriously, got an old Commodore. I can't, <laughs> I'm, I have it. a, if I had a baby. Go, you gotta go, of course. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll be right back. What? Um, did she say she had a baby? She if did. you guys have questions for us out there, you know, feel free to type them into the comments and we will, we will try to answer as many as we can. Um, again, do you see them on your screen? Uh, I have a little like Google. Oh, you are the boss. You get it. I get it. You get the questions. Um, yes, I'm gonna be able to look at them. But uh, you guys, Dead to Me premieres like very, very soon. Season two. Soon. Like, real like soon. Like in uh, oh, just six hours and five minutes. Is that right? <laughs> Something like that. James with the math. Very smart. I was a, yeah. Smart. Um, acting, acting, and math. So I'm gonna I excel at both. They both go together, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do anything else. Just math <laughs> equations and just right. brilliant acting. That's it. That's all I can do. Um, all right. I'm looking to see. I guess I've asked. I, I answered my question. So I have answer. no questions. Um, maybe we'll start with one for Linda. Uh, uh, while we I made these deli beans. Um, perfect. Is that rude. Well, what I'm kind hungry. of? Uh, those are jelly beans. They're jelly bellies, but they're sours. You really made them. You really made them seem like Entenmann's. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And the zoomy for props goes to <laughs> the zoomy. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. It's coming. You know the zoomy awards. Oh, of course they're Christina's, coming. Christina's. Yeah. Christina's looks like the screensaver you get at Christmas time almost. <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> also, you have yeah. To, yeah, you have to buy that. Um, Why she have a fire on? It's it's a hundred degrees outside. I don't know, but it looks nice at her house. It does. Hey, Linda, I have a question, and it's from at Demi Velvets. Ooh, um, okay. What are your favorite parts about your character? Ooh, there's a lot that I love about Judy because she. First of all, thank you for the question. Thank you for being with us. I hope that you and yours are safe and well. Um, the thing that I love about Judy is she's so spontaneous and that she can have all kinds of bad behavior and I'm able to justify it through my character. And I love the way that you guys write her. And I love the way that she craves affection so much that in every scene, my goal is to get a connection with the, next, the person I'm sitting next to. And so that is really fun to play all the time because Judy doesn't always get that. So, um, but she's just, does stuff that I would never do or hope I would never do, but she still has this huge heart. So she's really 
she's really fun. Like she was well-intentioned, but she just leaves, you know, a minefield wherever she goes. Um, okay, great. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> did, I just, was that, did I answer? That's a totally great answer. Um, Christina. I one jelly bean. I, think she, I think she left. She came in and she was not having it. She, oh, that so, must have been an accident. She, yeah. No, I think she forgot to wash her hands. Automatically. You cannot forget to wash your hands right she now. Forgot to wash your hands and ran back. And that was at least 20 seconds of hand washing, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, well, here's a question for the cast at hand. Um, let's see. Uh, what what about this material stood out to you from other projects that you were considering? I swear I didn't write this question. She's uh, back. She's oh, back. She's, okay, we'll get we'll we'll get to that one. Okay, uh, what happened? What happened? What did I miss? You so missed much. I got kicked off. Then I had to find the password again. Oh, hmm. That's pretty fast. For what? Okay, Christina, yeah. I have a question for you from. Well, this is from at Bolin's Beth. No. Okay. Right? No, no, sorry. Here's a question from Christine LaPlaca Connolly. What do you use to channel the emotions when your character is in deep grief? Um, well, it's complicated. <laughs> Very complicated question. Um, I, I think that the material feels so close to my own fibers of my own traumas that I've gone through in my life. And I think that I never worry about, here's the thing. Okay. I'm going to give you a little, little insight into something. I watched um, an actor studio with uh, Sally Field a long time ago. And she was talking about the first movie she did that was like dramatic. Right. And so she's talking about, she's like in this prairie, and there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, oh God, my phone, sorry. Hundreds of thousands of like, you know, prairie people behind her and like horses and stuff. And she's supposed to go from a thousand feet away to this mark. And by the time she gets to the mark, she's supposed to be crying. And every time she would go, okay, I have to cry, I have to cry, I have to cry, I have to, have to, cry, I have to cry. And she would get to the mark and she couldn't. And she knew in that moment that it wasn't about the result, it was about the journey. And so for me, taking Liz's beautifully written stuff and just going like, I, it doesn't matter where I go to, I'll get there because it's, it's there. But it's also in us too, you know, like we all have felt intense pain in our life and it kind of lives, it lives there. So for me, it's more like for this show in particular, it's very personal. A lot of what Jen, who Jen is, is very personal to me. But as a, from an acting standpoint, that listening to Sally Field say, it's not, you can't think about where you're going. You've got to come, you've got to know where you're coming from. That's a great answer. And thank you for your kind words about the writing. I appreciate that. Um, and then well, so you paid, you paid me a hundred dollars before we started the zoom. So, um, I did. I'd like you to donate that to world central kitchen. Great. Right. Shall. Okay. Thank you very much. Constantly being reminded of how poor my sign is. <laughs> no, wait, wait, <laughs> your, your sign is poor. Look, Linda has hearts all over hers. I mean, this is done a in bird. Crayons. Look at Luke. A bird. A bird. A bird. Yeah, I photoshopped it. I didn't know we were supposed to do a sign because I don't read all the email because I'm so like ADD that I'm like talking point uh, where I'm supposed to go. And then I was like, wait, I'm supposed to make a sign? Like literally like 15 minutes before. And I was like, oh, crap on a cracker. Got to make a sign for the program. Here's a, here's a question um, from Leanne Mitchell for, for the cast at large. Uh, what about this material stood out to you from other projects you were considering? Um, what drew you to it and, and what made you love it? You. <laughs> no, seriously, you. I love you. Like none of us can really like come to this and not say, like, I'm gonna cry right now because I love you so much. And I think that you and Kel and, and Abe and like everyone who 
created this this program. It, it comes from such a place of like this deep, beautiful love for humanity and all of its imperfections and your own grief, your own trauma, Kelly's, I'm sure everyone, it's like, you're just, it's just you guys. Yeah. That's all. You know, I'm going to sit over here by my fireplace and sweat. <laughs> Well, that's all you have to go on is this script, you know, usually. And then I, for me, when I met with you, Liz, and we spoke and Jessica Elbaum, you know, who I knew from before, but I had never met you before. It felt like I'd known you forever. The same with when I met Christina, the same when I met with Kelly, like we all sort of felt like, I, I don't know, there was, there was something there that seemed um, older than the relationship we had just formed. And I think that the, the writing was so much fun and the story was so much fun. And the character was so much fun, and it wasn't like anything else. You couldn't, you couldn't quite tell what the where it was going to go. And I think that was so much fun, especially sort of to be on Netflix and do that too, because I know they're going to let you do whatever it is you you want to do. So that was really, I don't know, it was really different than anything else I was reading at the time. And that the idea of like two women going head to head as best friends, yeah. and that the parts weren't interchangeable. You know, it was it's lots of times when I read two females, and I've said this before, you can kind of interchange their roles and not know who's who's speaking from just reading them. But Jen and Judy are so different. And all of the characters, all of the characters are so specific and wonderful and have their own sensibility and sense of humor. Thank you, guys. Well, selfishly, those answers made me feel really good. So thank you for saying all of that. Um, Virtual hug to my sweet. Oh, Feldman. We I love, love you so much. I love you guys so much. Oh, I really miss you. I wish we could all be yeah. having some margaritas or something together. Um, okay, more questions. Um, Thanks, Obama. <laughs> uh, oh, there's so many questions. Oh, wow, wow. Okay. Oh, how about this? Okay, uh, for Sam and Luke, is there one one trait that you feel like you share in common with your characters? Mm -hmm. hmm. Probably just like Henry's super outgoing and like happy. Um, I would like to consider myself like like pretty happy at most times, most times. Um, so yeah, I yeah probably that. Just like we're both outgoing, super outgoing. Yeah, you are super outgoing. You I'm every sure. time you're on the set, everybody is in a good mood just because <laughs> Thanks. You're, you're just the best. <laughs> Sadie, miss, Sadie misses you so much, Luke. I know. Tell Sadie I said hi. I miss her too. I will. And what about you, Sammy? The best clothes. Um, I would say uh, Charlie tends to be fairly standoffish and slightly closed off, especially, especially with kind of well with everyone. And I find, and then when you know when you get to know Charlie and he kind of eventually opens up, especially, you know, people will see with uh, season two, he can, he, there's, he, he's kind of a sweet guy. And, you know, I, I feel like I can tend to, when I meet new people, be a little bit uh, closed off and standoffish the way Charlie is. So yeah, in certain aspects, I definitely do very much relate to Charlie. That's a really, that's a really interesting and very smart answer. And also just so you know, season two, just wait, Sam McCarthy, <laughs> so good he really brings it i'm so excited for people to see you in just a few hours do your thing um yeah one of my favorite scenes is a sam in the car so we had so much yes. fun making, doing that scene there's a really fun scene coming up yeah <laughs> it's um still a secret right it's still a secret still right mm -hmm. this is uh, live yes all secrets okay so, things are secrets um Oh my God, these are crazy. Uh, okay. Um, wow. Um, what, scenes, what scenes were the most fun to shoot in season one? Oh, in season one? Yes, because I think right now that's all people have, have seen. A uh, stoner with her. Yeah, that was fun. On the, beach. Um, on the beach was the most fun because I think that was one of the first scenes we shot together, right? If, yeah. if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. And I literally like we sat we sat on the beach and it was freezing cold, and we had these blankets and our um, 
the people that help us with our wardrobe and stuff uh, got us the hot best. water bottles. They're the best. Yeah. And they put some hot water bottles underneath these blankets. And we just sat there on the beach. And in between scenes, as they were setting up lighting and doing stuff, which could sometimes take like a good 30, 40 minutes, Linda and I just sat and talked to each other and laughed. And and then when we were doing the scene and we we're supposed to getting supposed to be getting high, I actually felt completely high. Like <laughs> I was I was laughing so yeah. hard. Like, like when you see the, that scene, I'm literally laughing from being high, but I wasn't high. Right. It was just like we were having such a an a remarkable moment of realization that like, oh my God, we are completely connected as two humans besides the show. Um, but as two actresses who are completely supporting each other. So like really magical kind of like moment of uh just wow, it was that was a really special night and it was really cold. And normally people would go back to their trailers in between lighting setups and all that BS. But we just didn't want to we didn't want to leave. No. Maybe it was the hot water bottles. <laughs> that helped. Kim's amazing. They're amazing. Like that, that definitely yeah. helped. But also it was just, it was nice. It was one of those moments where you think, oh, this is exactly where I, where I want to be doing what I want to be doing. And I'm so grateful. And I felt so grateful to be doing it with you because we just, it, it just seemed clear for me from that point on that this was going to be something really fun and special for us. Oh, my friend. I Aww. love you. James, I don't want you to think that there aren't questions for you, but pretty right now. Uh, it's okay. No, no. But right now, <laughs> I have a question for James. Oh, what do okay. you think about my performance? Just kidding. Just what? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I haven't seen it either. James, here's the, here's the thing. Um, the only questions for you re, re, uh, revolve around you taking off your shirt. So well, I don't know. I mean, no, no, first, no, not no. The first no. Time I've been Get rid of those questions. I'm not, because... listen, I'm reporting. <laughs> The news here. Wait, when did I do that? Oh, I was just going to say my favorite scenes were. And you can't say anything. Can you, you take off your shirt? Oh, no. <laughs> Can you just do it now? Season two. What's that? Um, when uh, I, you were getting high with uh, with Linda, I was getting drunk with Linda. That no, was that was really scenes. fun, too. I think that's we laughed so hard. The shirt off, I think, and that's when it came off. Um, we did laugh very hard, and uh, that was good. And and then I said, probably the trampoline scene. When I read that in the script. Oh God, that was, was the most ridiculous thing. I love that so much. You are yeah. so amazing. People, James Marsden, look, he's good looking, who cares? But at the core of him is one of the most talented actors I've ever worked with in my entire oh, and life. Nice guy. A thousand my entire, nice guy. And, you are and very sweet of you. The nicest person who I, I, like every day, like coming to the trailer, I'd be like, grumpy 5 a.m. and he's like hey girl like happy and my shirt good off. and with <laughs> shirt off you usually <laughs> had your pants off but that's a whole other thing it's just <laughs> oh I love you it's all lies but I love you no, no it's not it's lies true. It's, it's Marston it's come a joy. on we it's, love it's, you it's, it's I love all of you it's just it's such a cool family everyone's so different everyone just connects and gels and Liz, uh, who's just running the show, and and you, you I, I must say, like to echo what Christina said, it's so much of it, all of it is right there on the page. So when I I'm reading the script and I see that Steve gets up and goes and jumps on a mini tramp, like it's so specific. Her observations about so human weird. behavior, odd human behavior, but like just you know, comedically rich good stuff. I, like, I wish I could take credit for that, and I just can't. It's all Liz. You know what? It's not all Liz, because Liz has a lot of great writers that she works with, including Kelly Hutchins. Yes, yes, Wait, hold on, this yes. way. And Kelly and Wait, everyone, this way. of course. Hold on. But it's on Shower. the page. Wait. Yeah, where is she? You there know, the, the writers on the show And then are also down to yeah. Kong. We have to go down to Kong. Of course, of course. We're and on great actors. Well, I was gonna, and Susie. I was going to ask <laughs> Kong and Susie. Sam. I was going to ask Kong and Susie what their, what their favorite parts of their characters are. Uh, I love Karen because she ha has no idea how annoying she is or how, <laughs> how she can ruin things. And there's so many people 
But I like that. It, I think she would be much more likable if she had just a little bit more self-awareness. But it's very freeing to, to, to play someone like that who's just completely oblivious. And, and by the way, uh, in season two, without giving much away, I will say, ah, oh, there's some real great Karen stuff happening. And also what's amazing about you, Susie, is what an incredible improviser you are. And, you know, we do a lot of improv on the show. So many of the great funny lines come from the actors themselves. You know, we sort of guide them a little bit, but they make up the funniest shit. And Karen is like, a sorry, Karen, that's how much I believe you're the part. She's <laughs> the master improviser. So in, in your scenes, especially, uh, you know, coming up that I won't ruin, but like, they're just, it's, there's so many fun little improvised moments that just make the scene, you know, shine in the way that it does. And Kong too, like, yeah. I, I can't. Kong. You, 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 were, you were like the sleeper sensation of season one. He's like an, an enigma, basically. It's so like, great. Where the scenes like in first season with us sitting there drinking. Yeah. Uh, Kong, do you, what do you like about playing? And say like, what do you like about playing? Huh? Wait, I was just asking him what he likes about playing uh, Pastor Wayne. Well, it's, you know, it's interesting. When I read it and I auditioned for you guys, and then I remember when I we were at the gazebo and we first started talking about it and you were saying that, you know, Linda and Christina are bringing so much truthful stuff to it that, you know, it's it's a thing that you talked about also, Liz, I think when you got the, um, the uh, Writers Guild Award, I think you were saying like, thank you to CBS for not, you know, making this into, forcing me to make this into multicam, you know? So it's just that, uh, that weird alchemy, I'm sure that you know of, of you, you, you think you know what it's gonna be and then you hire the, the best people that you, you can and then it becomes what it is. And at the core of it, I think is, is that the two ladies are, were just bringing so much truth to it that, you know, we didn't have to go to slightly more multicam energy you know we could just be very very natural and the camera's going to pick up on it so i feel like i was thinking of facts of life i thought i was very much the mrs garrett <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> with a little bit of tootie totally uh, but if you were miss if you were mrs garrett you'd have to do everything from the side because she's a theater <laughs> actress so okay. if you ever watch facts of life she never she never quite goes the frontal she goes a little <laughs> Oh, so excited. Is no that true? Quarter action. I think that is true. Yeah, huh. go watch it. You guys, always question. like. Here's the last question. What is everybody's uh, first thing you're going to do when you're out of quarantine? Wait, what is what? What's the first thing you want to do when you're, when you're out of quarantine? Ooh. I want to hug my parents and my sister and my brother and my aunts. I want to hug my family that I don't get to see. Me too. Me I too. miss them. I can't wait to hug my mom. And my friends, yeah. I'm gonna go to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we'll build, we'll Walmart. I love going to Walmart with my friends and building toilet paper forts. It's so fun. <laughs> I do that all the time. And <laughs> That's like the last thing you can do right now. Yeah, too. Right I know, because you can't use no toilet paper. <laughs> I want I want to um go work in my daughter's library at her school because I really miss Miss Bertle. Uh, but also my mom uh, took a test uh, just to take it because she's almost 80. She's good. Yay. Great. Good news. That's so great. Let's all, go, definitely let's all go have a dinner when we get yeah, out. Yeah, let's all go have a dinner we'll, when this is a restaurant, done. right? Yes, please. Yeah. A restaurant. Let's drop those restaurants up. Let's business. support our chefs for America. Yes. Our yes. chefs for America. Jose Andre, thank you so much. Feeding people in need. Thank you so much for all your donations, big or small. They'll take it. We really appreciate it. You're with us too. Thank you so much for being here with us too. Thanks, yes. Liz, for talking and creating this and helping us. I just want to give a shout out to my family who are watching all across the country and the world. I miss you so much and I can't wait to hug you. Me too. Liz's family and my own family. <laughs> Listen, my family. That's Liz's family. Cute. My friend would happily take a hug from you first. Trust me. I want to. I want. I just. I want to hug Sam. I know. Oh. He has an Adam's apple right now. Oh come on! Right now. Whoa. Sam, did you have a birthday? Uh, 
My birthday is Mar- was March 15th. It just passed like two months. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, March. belated. Happy, Happy belated. That was like the beginning of this whole thing. Very belated. Did you oh, actually get to have a party? Coming up too. I saw some of my friends a little bit, but it was kind of the beginning of quarantine. So it was only like four or five people since the 10 people rule had already been put in place. Right. Yeah. Well, we love you, honey. Love you too. Love I you. love all of you so much. I miss you so very much. Um, you know, you can always come into my cul-de-sac and just mask <laughs> it up, and we can just wave. She has her own cul-de-sac. <laughs> I do I, I? I own Applegate a cul-de-sac. court. <laughs> so you own Applegate I got, court. I, I got the guy living to the next to me who's like crazy who has a gun. I'm like anyway. Okay, here we go. Okay. Anyway, that, that's it. All right. Fun, I'm not guys. Really sure how to close? I'm not going out, but, you know, I feel. Really... Okay, so let's Can explain. Say... But if, if anyone's checking in right now, again. Yes. World Central Kitchen was started by Jose Andres, who's an amazing Spanish chef who's been living here for 27 years. Who's been working in the food industry here, but has dedicated his entire life at this point to feeding people who cannot get food. He's opening up food banks. He is now within the net last, what was it a month? Uh, two, Six two million, months. Yeah. two months. Six million meals wow. to people who cannot afford to get their food. Also helping restaurants to become more like bodegas, I guess, you know, so that people can get their produce. They can also get their meals. Also like we, depending on cafeteria food, for LAUSD or any kind of public schools, they're not getting that. These people are providing that. It's really an incredible organization. Please visit their website so you can know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, I think that's Thank something you. like 250,000 fresh meals a day. That they're serving. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. It's incredible. That's Thank you for all your work, World Central Kitchen. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.